Hi there, this is a small unboxing video. I just ordered a Raspberry Pi Pico with headers from a new e-commerce site. Um, it is actually Quartz Electronics from India. So I just ordered it there and uh, it arrived today. Um, I was a little surprised when I looked at the board because it is not the official Raspberry Pi Pico. I thought it was official board, but what I got was this particular board here, as you can see on the screen. Um, when I looked at this board, I was a little stumbled uh, because it read as a DIY Fly Pico RP20 basic board. I actually ordered two of them. I already opened one of them. So this, I thought I'd make a video to unbox in front of you to show exactly what this board is all about. Anyways, so this particular board, when I looked up first time, the board, the package was too small. So I was wondering whether it's the real Raspberry Pi Pico or is this, a, or is this some other board? And uh, when I looked at it, it looks like a Raspberry Pi Pico drawn up in here, as you can see. And it also read as ADIY Ply Pico RP20 basic board all over here. And you can also see that this is what really got me more excited because it said designed and assembled in India, made in India. So I thought, okay, let's open this and check it up. So I just opened this, just cut this open. And the moment I open it, I think you can see some foam boards in here, the foam padding. Okay, let's get it out. All right, so you can just take this foam out. And if you open the foam below, you can see this board right here. It's got the headers pre-soldered as expected. That's what I wanted. And uh, if you look at this in comparison to the official Raspberry Pi Pico, which I have it on this side. This is the official Raspberry Pi Pico which I have here. This is the board that I just bought, which is from the ADIY um, brand, I would say. And uh, of course, uh, the board looks almost in the same profile. It has no, no differences at all. The size and everything looked exactly identical. Even the pins, when I checked it up, I think the pin configuration is also the same. Uh, you can see the pin is labeled below. Uh, maybe I can just bring it a little closer to the camera. Let me try to focus it. Hopefully you can see it. Yep, you can see it now. You can actually see that the pins read almost the same like you'd find on the official Raspberry Pi Pico with headers. Of course, the headers might look a little different here, but this is how it is when you get it from ADIY. And uh, also something I noticed on this board is that um, apart from the micro USB connections and all the usual suspects, the one thing that you notice in here is that, let me just zoom this a bit more. There's an extra button on this new board, which is not found in the official Raspberry Pi. Yeah, there's a boot cell button here. There's a boot cell button. You'll find the same boot cell button even in this board also. Uh, but along with that, you'll also find one more button, which is the, which is labeled as the reset button. You can see it's written as reset. If I can bring it closer, you can see that, right? So it's written as reset here. Uh, what I what I checked up when I checked up on their own on their website, it claimed they claim that holding the reset button is mostly useful for restarting your board without having to unconnect the power and reconnect them back. So if you normally use a Raspberry Pi Pico connected via micro USB, if you want to re completely reset the board, you might want to unconnect and reconnect it. Of course, if you're going to be using micro Python, I can, you can simply hit the stop uh, reset button, which will do a warm reboot, restart Raspberry, restart micro Python on the board itself. But sometimes you want to do a hard reset. I think this button could be quite useful, right? To reset this board. And uh, apart from that, if you look at the other changes is that I see one big chip here which is not which is noticeably missing on the official Raspberry Pi Pico when I did some read up uh, this chip comes from Windborn semiconductors and when I looked up the model I forgot the actual number some 
25Q something. It's basically when I when I did some read up through my lens and uh, checked it up on the website. Uh, this happened. To, this happens to be a flash memory. So uh, when I did some read up, there's a four megabyte uh, flash memory. So looks like it's got four MB of flash storage with this board. Um, the official Raspberry Pi Pico claims to have two megabyte. I have to confirm that. So I'm not really sure. But I look at the data sheet. They claim it has two megabyte of flash storage. But this reads as four megabyte from the specifications I found on this chip on the website. Um, even the official spec sheets from the ADIOS side claim that they have a four megabyte flash memory. Apart from that, I think it's all the same. Uh, one thing that is also missing in the one with headers, of course, uh, there are headers and in, in the Raspberry Pi Pico with headers comes with a small connector for the debug port. Using the serial wire debug, you can actually connect to this particular uh, port to debug this Raspberry Pi Pico's firmware. If you're going to be doing low level programming, mostly in C and maybe writing at the firmware level, I think it might be useful. Uh, but otherwise, for normal usage, I don't think you'll need it. If you're going to be using MicroPython normally, I don't think you need it. So this is basically lacking in here. So apart from that, there's no change. Uh, there's no difference at the back side of the board. They look almost similar other than the header stuff that's there in the Raspberry Pi Pico H, which is missing, noticeably missing in here. Um, Let's try to connect this board and check whether it really works with MicroPython. So we'll just do that now. Um, in order to connect this board, of course, uh, you'll need the micro USB connector. So I'm just going to connect the micro USB on this board. And I'm going to look up my file manager. All right, looks like nothing came up. Wow, OK. Normally, when you buy a brand new board from Raspberry Pi Pico, the moment you connect it, if there's no firmware flashed, you'll see this automatically switching to boot cell mode. The first time it uh, shows up as a flash drive, but it didn't happen on this board as soon as I connect it. So let me try holding the boot cell key and uh, trying to connect one more time. So I'm just going to disconnect it. Hold the boot cell key this time. I'm just going to hold this key. You need to hold this boot select key normally when you want to reflash the firmware. So I'm going to do that. Hold the boot cell key and then Connect the micro USB on this. Okay, so looks like it appeared on my desktop. So I'm just gonna switch my screens. I'm using Ubuntu, so you'll see my Ubuntu desktop. If you're using Windows or Mac, you can open up your Mac file manager and look it up, of course, if you have bought this board. Um, so I'm just gonna switch to another screen in here. Just one moment, please. So in the file manager, you can see that uh, it shows up as rpi-rp2. That means it is actually being listed in here. So you can just open this and you can see the usual suspects, the index or htm and the uh, info uf2.txt that you normally get on a brand new board. Now you can just try to write the MicroPython firmware onto this board and let's just check that. So let me just open up another window. And I think I should be having the Raspberry Pi Pico firmware uh, downloaded in my downloads folder. I just did that yesterday. So I'll just uh, drag and drop this into this folder, which is the RPI2. And as usual, after the file is copied, it vanishes. You can see that it's automatically unmounted from here, right? Um, now we can actually try to open up Tony and check whether you can access this board. All right, let me just uh, start restart. Yes, you can actually see that uh, the MicroPython is actually running on this board. Um, I think there's not much of a difference. Otherwise, you will see uh, all the usual stuff you can try from machine. Import uh, frequency, for example, and uh, you can just check the frequency in here. Yeah, it's got running at 125 megahertz, as you can see that on the screen. Um, let me just move the screen across on the side. So, yeah, you can see that it's showing us running at 125 megahertz. Um, you can also um, check by using import os and os dot uname 
shows up it's sys name is rp2 no name rp2 it's all the same no difference at all in fact it's got the same chip on this board as the official raspberry Pi pico the same rp2040 chip is being used but the board is being assembled in india looks like it with their own circuitry with some changes here and there uh adding the reset button and all that so other than that i think i don't think there's any major difference in this board in fact if you're looking for a board with headers at a low price in india i think um this board might be worth looking for. So I still need to use this board and see how reliable this is. I don't think there should be a problem because I see all the chips and everything is well soldered. Everything is well done here. So I don't think there should be a much of a problem. It costs 100 rupees lesser than the official Raspberry Pi with headers. So yeah, if you want to save some price, if you're in India, I think you can buy this board instead, right? So, uh, that's about it for now. So I think I uh, hope you found this uh, uh, video useful. So if you do um, really like this video, you can watch my other videos I'm making on uh, the MicroPython topics, mostly related to Raspberry Pi Pico. All right then. So thank you all. Uh, meet you in the next one.